Welcome to another scriptural study. In this scriptural study, we will share the 2018-2019 forecast of the celestial clock and calendar of Yahuwah. This presentation is organized under seven witnesses or categories. And it is so important to view this video in full screen mode. And please, stop the video at any time to focus on the precise details of the three scriptural celestial witnesses in creation being shared. We would like to thank all of those Bereans all over earth who have helped us to be taught by Yahuwah to number our days. With Yahuwah's three celestial witnesses known as the sun, moon, with the stars. Our scriptural conference calls, scriptural study Skype calls, and scriptural assemblies along with the photographs and film footage on what the sun, moon, with the stars actually do from all over earth in these past 15 years has been an eye-opening experience indeed. Let us begin with a quick refresher on the three witnesses of the celestial clock and calendar of Yahuwah. Because isn't it true that scripture is clear about utilizing all of Yahuwah's witnesses so that Yahuwah can teach us to number our days? Or are you one of those folks that allows someone else to number your days for you. And or worse yet, pay for something online that is free. The celestial clock and calendar of Yahuwah has three parts, and are better stated, witnesses that can be counted, measured, and yes, numbered daily, to see how they work together as one, in perfect harmony, and as a celestial clock would. Because it is a scriptural and empirical astronomical fact that the first witness in the Shamaim we can all observe and our Shamar, which is the sun. Yes, each day we can number, measure, and or count when each sunrise and sunset occurs in time and degrees to the horizon, let alone degrees to true north. And thus why in this day and age, we all can measure the scriptural and empirical astronomical witnesses in advance in order to go outside to test and prove what actually happens with the sun, moon, with the stars in creation. And thus why we all can observe and or shamar the second witness each and every day to measure when each moonrise and our moonset occurs in time and degrees to the horizon, let alone degrees to true north. Yes, we all can count or measure the moon in time and degrees to the horizon and degrees to true north at each sunrise and sunset each day also, along with the percent illumination of the moon and for how long. And why the moon can be measured every day in advance as to its position to true north in degrees, degrees to the horizon, and percent illumination at sunrise and sunset. In order to go outside in creation to verify why the moon is known scripturally as the steadfast witness forever. And finally, the third witness known as the stars, which we all can observe and or shamar each day, and thus number, count, or measure how the sun and moon align with the stars each and every day in actual time at sunrise and sunset, and other specific times. Because the heavens are proclaiming the esteem of the Almighty One. Because the scripture states, night after night reveals knowledge. But what knowledge? The names of the stars, of course, which have significant scriptural meaning, and as such, purpose. 
because Yahuwah, the Father of Lights, has named each one. Just as the scriptures defines the worth, value, and purpose of the sun and moon, and scripture reveals why the stars have two separate purposes. The first purpose of the stars witness the seasons, just like the scripture explains in great detail, astronomically season after season and year after year. While the second purpose of the stars helps to witness New Moon Day for the first day of the first month, let alone all months. So yes, we can all observe and or shamar the stars each day and thus number, count, and measure how the sun and moon align with the stars to tell us the seasons, let alone how to measure time each hour every day. Because Yahuwah and his star clock revolves around the North Star known as Polaris today, counterclockwise, every day in 23 hours and 56 minutes, equating to 364 days in time in a 365.25 day solar year. Isn't it great that astronomers of the past as well knew that the sun and stars bring in all the years exactly with perfect justice in 364 days in a 365.25 day solar year? Isn't it even more wonderful that astronomers share this as well in this very day and age and publish it so that anyone who is interested can learn this? Is it any coincidence that Eob had to be reminded of this as well? That Yahuwah and his celestial clock utilizes the stars to tell seasons and time and that no man can manipulate this. Isn't it even more wonderful that historically the scriptural star Ash, known today as Arcturus, was and is known today as the Bear Pointer and or Guardian of the Bear? Because these lights from the Father of Lights have been utilized for celestial navigation, let alone to determine seasons and time for thousands of years. And the scriptures are laced with stars, which night after night reveals knowledge, as the Father of Lights predetermined them to be, in order that we get outside in creation to number our days with the sun, moon, with the stars, to acknowledge the work of his fingers. Which leads us to the second category of this presentation, of what the celestial clock pattern of the first day, first month, looks like year after year in the spring with the sun, moon, with the stars. Because, as scripture states, it takes three or more witnesses to establish a matter. So let us now explore the Shemaim with all three or more witnesses of the celestial clock and calendar which proclaim the esteem of the Almighty One the Father of Lights, whose name is Yahuwah. In 2017, as in every other year, the three witnesses of the celestial clock and calendar of Yahuwah revealed the celestial clock pattern for a first day of the first month view. This stellarium view represents my area at sunrise on the pagan day of Tuesday, April 11th, 2017. As the moon, the lesser light, greeted the sun, the greater light, at 6.41 a.m., announcing New Moon Day for the first day of the first month for the 2017-2018 cycle. But this is only two witnesses. When we go out in creation to test and prove all things with the sun, moon, with the stars the night before New Moon Day, all the way to sunrise for the first day of any first month annual event, we would have seen the greater light, the sun, moving counterclockwise in proximity to the star known as the Lamb towards sunrise, while the moon, the lesser light, would be moving counterclockwise in proximity to two stars known as Rigi Alawa, known as the foot of the teacher, and the other star known as the branch, known today as Spika. And finally, 
the scriptural star known as Ash, known today as Arcturus, and are the Bear Pointer, which always clearly highlights how Ursa Major, known as the Bear in Scripture, is always positioned at sunrise for a first day of every first month event in the spring annually. Hallelujah that three or more witnesses establish a matter. Hallelujah, the same celestial clock view with the sun, moon, with the stars was seen for the first day of the first month in 2016, which occurred in my area at sunrise on the pagan day of Friday, April 22nd, 2016. Because all three witnesses were in alignment. As these three celestial clock witnesses always are in a first day, first month event. And thus why the pagan day of Monday, April 30th, 2018, will be the first day of the first month. Because, once again, the celestial clock pattern reveals itself with the three scriptural witnesses of the sun, moon, with the stars, as these three or more witnesses always established the matter for a first day, first month event. Hallelujah for his sun, moon, with the stars. But regrettably, the majority do not say this. Because many will erroneously say that the pagan day of Saturday, March 31st, 2018, is the first day of the first month. Why? Simply put, people do not number their days with all three scriptural celestial witnesses, with the sun, moon, with the stars, and as such, will err with the order of months. Let us now explore the Shamaim. The heavens in creation do indeed reveal a 13th month as backed up by scripture. Many are extremely surprised that within a year we can have 13 full moons, and as such, 13 new moon days in a single year, as we can see in 2018. It happened in 2015, and will happen again in 2020, and 2023. Here is the same view from timeanddate.com, but in a summarized 10-year sample. Again, highlighting that there was 13 full moon events, and our new moon days in 2015, and will be again in 2018, 2020, and 2023. This happens because it is how Yahuwah designed the heavens to work. Just like Yahuwah's astronomer, Hanok, stated that a solar circle, the greater light, the sun in a year, numbers 365.25 days. Just as all astronomers recognize today, and thus what is known as a side real year, which is 365 Point two five days. And why the pagan Gregorian calendar is short by a quarter of a day each year and is forced every four years to add or intercalate one day in which they call leap years. And thus why Hanok, Yahuwah's astronomer, knew a lunar 12-month year consisted of 354 days, and why it was short every year by one-third of a month approximately, as compared to the 365.25 side real solar year. And thus why the celestial clock and calendar of Yahuwah intercalates itself without the need of humankind's involvement, Yahuwah adds in a 13th full moon and or month as we can see in this 10-year sample that we are presently experiencing. And because a scriptural year does not start on the pagan month of January, but rather in the spring, as already proven with the celestial clock pattern of numbering our days with the sun, moon, with the stars, as we have already discussed. Thus, we are now aware on how to scripturally number our days to properly order our months as the 2015-2016 cycle had 13 months and why the 2017-2018 cycle we are presently in 
has 13 months. While the next 13th month cycle will be experienced in 2020, 2021. And finally, the 2023-2024 cycle as per this 10-year sample. Still not convinced what the Father of Lights reveals in his heavens? Well, it gets better. Remember, the first day of the first month always reveals the same celestial clock pattern with the sun, moon, with the stars. And hallelujah indeed that a first day of a 13th month has its own unique celestial clock signature and or pattern as well with the sun, moon, with the stars as we can easily view as we experienced in 2016 on the pagan day of March 24th at sunrise when the first day of the 13th month commenced. Notice how the greater light, the sun, is not in proximity to the Lamb, as this star is below the horizon and cannot be seen at sunrise, like you would see it on a first day, first month, celestial clock scenario. Notice how the moon on a first day of a 13th month is not in proximity to the foot of the teacher and is below the branch or the star known as Spica today. In fact, the moon in a first day 13th month scenario with the celestial clock view will always be in proximity to stars known anciently as the sent one, maintainer of the law, and beautiful Yahuwah. And finally, the celestial clock view for a first day 13th month event will show the scriptural star ash and the bear where it will always be in a first day 13th month event, which is not in a first day first month position. Okay, what about the next first day 13th month event that is just upon us? Hallelujah that the pagan day of March 31st, 2018 at sunrise is not a first day first month event as it is revealing the same celestial clock view just like all first day 13th month views reveal with the sun, moon, with the stars. Let's test and prove this further with the next first day, 13th month celestial clock view in 2021. Yes, indeed, as we can see, it is the same celestial clock view for a first day, 13th month event. What about in 2024? Hallelujah! The same celestial clock view reveals itself for a first day, 13th month event. So again, why will some erroneously state that the pagan day, Saturday, March 31st, 2018, is the first day of the first month, let alone err with other days and months? Isn't it because the world and their world religions are in love with what is known as the equinox method? Because the historical and archaeological record has multitudes of witnesses to easily prove this. And as such, why the world and those who desire to remain in it ignore the third celestial clock witness, which is the stars. Scripturally, where does it state that the equinox and or fall equinox method are for signs, appointed times, for days, and years to bring light on the earth? Scripture does not state this, does it? This self-inflicted man-made confusion comes from a scriptural subject known as the takufa, which means coming around, circuit of time or space, and how the scripture explains the circuit of movement of the greater light, the sun. Yes, the same circuit that Enoch wrote about with the sun, as the greater light takes 365.25 days a year to complete its circle. This 365.25 day solar circuit is now called the analemma today. Just as Enoch further defined the sun, the greater light, as a 365.25 day solar circle. 
So the question remains, is the Takufa a celestial clock and calendar signal, flag, beacon, monument, and or mark as it relates to the calendar of Yahuwah? No. The scripture is extremely clear that the only three witnesses from Yahuwah with his sun, moon, with the stars, is his oath, meaning signs, flag, beacon for appointed times, and for days and years. So, is there evidence that the world and its world religions loves the equinox method? Over and above the three witnesses of the celestial clock and calendar of Yahuwah, that are to be used to number our days and order our months. Yes, indeed, there are countless historical and archaeological witnesses that reveal how the ancient Egyptian architects carefully planned their buildings and obelisks, aligning them with astronomical significant events, such as equinoxes and solstices. Why? In Egypt, sun temples were flanked by two obelisks. A well-known historical fact is that Queen Hatshepsut utilized these obelisks to imply that the blessed beam of the sun of Amun-Ra shone on her on the equinox. And these archaeological sites can still be visited today. Hadrian designed the Pantheon to do the same thing, as the beams of light shone on him making him look divine when he entered the structure during the equinox and solstice, thus showing that he had command over the light rays of the sun. It is why prophets like Yeshayahu spoke against this non-scriptural practice. In fact, there is so much historical and archaeological evidence that prove man's ways are not like Yahuwah and his way. Yes, indeed, the ancients were well aware of the turning of the year with their love and devotion to create and erect man-made objects to identify it. And this non-scriptural insanity continues on to this very day as anyone can see this for themselves as an obelisk is called a gnomon as we can see from this church in Paris, France which is a man-made device designed to determine the position of the sun in the sky for the equinox and solstice time periods. And go figure. At the Vatican in Rome, known as the Second Babylon, because it is both a historical and archaeological fact that right in St. Peter's Square, the emperor, Caligula, brought in an obelisk from Egypt for the very same purpose. Of course the ancients knew the turn of the year because they love this non-scriptural practice of building temples, monuments, and calendars around them just like today. As Moshe knew so well, and so do we, no, we do not need any of man's devices to tell time because we have the sun, moon, with the stars to tell time, don't we? And more specifically, Yahuwah's appointed times. But the beginning of the month in the Babylonian calendar was determined after the vernal equinox by the direct observation by priests of the young crescent moon at sunset after the astronomical conjunction and or dark moon. And this custom and her tradition is still followed today in Judaism and Islam. While Christianity adopted the equinox method with Easter, which is none other than a Babylonian deity called Ishtar. And why lunar and her one witness only crescent moon model calendars to this very day have their first day of the first month after the equinox because they do not even consider the stars, the third witness which aligns with the sun and moon of the celestial clock and calendar of Yahuwah to number their days. And then there are conjunction lunar solar two model witness only calendars. That again 
ignore the third witness as well, and state that the seventh month is to be calculated by the fall equinox, and as such, erroneously state that the conjunction moon closest to the vernal equinox, before and or after, will be the first day of the first month. What these equinox method lovers fail to realize is that if everyone did indeed number their days with the three witnesses, with the sun, moon, with the stars, the appointed times and or feasts of Yahuwah will always be in their proper place in the spring, summer, and fall without the aids of humankind to determine them let alone their world religions. The Roman Catholic Church, the mother of Christianity to this day, sets the date of their pagan Easter with the first pagan Sunday after the first full moon after the pagan March equinox. And, regrettably, even full moon lunar solar models that only rely on two witnesses from the celestial clock erroneously have their first day of the first month after the vernal equinox too. Yes, indeed, there is more than enough scriptural, historical, and archaeological evidence that humankind and its world religions love the equinox methods. Rather than just numbering their days with the sun, moon, with the stars to properly order the months. If only people followed this sound scriptural advice under these simple scriptural guidelines. So, if the sun, moon, with the stars is a celestial clock, certainly there must be more witnesses, right? So, as shared already, the first day of the first month on the celestial clock and calendar of Yahuwah will commence at sunrise on the pagan day of Monday, April 30th, 2018, as the sun, moon, with the stars, always reveals this celestial clock view annually. So, what happens when we fast forward from this date to the first day of the seventh month, which occurs in my area on the pagan day of Thursday, October 25th, 2018 at sunrise. Shouldn't the stars that are aligned with the sun and moon on the first day of the first month move 180 degrees counterclockwise and then be aligned with the sun and moon in the opposite manner six months later? Well, hallelujah, this is what exactly happens as the sun is now in proximity with the stars known as the branch and the foot of the teacher. And the moon is in proximity to the star known as the lamb. While the scriptural star Ash and the bear have moved 180 degrees to their assigned position, revealing the fall and or autumn season. And Enoch shared that the heavens is a celestial clock, didn't he? Just like the astronomers of today do as well. Here is a consecutive month-by-month Stellarium simulation for the 2018-2019 cycle proving that the scripture, as verified by the Shamayim, is indeed a celestial clock. With the sun, moon, with the stars, and thus the true calendar of Yahuwah. Yes, indeed, the astronomer of Yahuwah knew about the celestial clock and calendar from and of the Father of Lights, just as the heavens verify today. So in closing, may we request that everyone just say no to self 
self-proclaimed ministries that request and or accept financial and monetary donations. Haven't we had enough of this? Especially from websites that boldly suggest how much to donate for something that is already free of charge from the scripture, let alone free for all to see and verify for themselves in the Shamayim. Because, regardless of any scriptural translation you utilize, this practice of peddling, marketing, commercializing, and or merchandising the word is clearly known scripturally as trading the word, corrupting the word, let alone adulterating the word. So, show some scriptural love and a sincere desire for the well-being of others who erroneously do this and help them in the way, truth, and life. And besides, have you ever wondered why these world religions, let alone most of these websites, attempt to squeeze in the celestial clock and calendar of Yahuwah into a monthly pagan Gregorian model? It is why we, and others, with a Berean and 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15 approach, do not provide a calendar, but rather only templates free of charge, and without any acceptance of any donations of any kind. The book of Tehillim, or Psalms, chapter 90, verse 12, is all about allowing Yahuwah to teach us to number our days, on our own, in advance, with the sun, moon, with the stars, with the intent to bring our hearts to wisdom, with the sun, moon, with the stars so we can personally know how to number our scriptural days and months on our own. Yes, test and prove all things first with scripture. And more importantly, verify what the sun, moon, with the stars actually do in creation day after day and night after night as the Father of Lights originally intended them to be utilized. We are under no illusions that humankind, even with all of this scriptural, historical, archaeological, and empirical astronomical evidence, will actually change. We have no doubt that those who still desire to remain in the world and its way still will consciously choose man's devices to tell time over and above what we call the scriptural positioning system, and why we remain at peace with scriptural love and joy with those we continue to assemble with, let alone continue to enjoy the wonderful work these Bereans do in scriptural word, scriptural name, and scriptural law studies, including the wonderful photograph and film footage they provide for the celestial clock and calendar of Yahuwah in which they provide free of charge. Hallelujah, as this has been an eye-opening experience indeed. We continue to pray in the name, which is above all names, that these scriptural study videos provide value to you and your loved ones. Until next time, Yahuwah willing, all the best in the name, which is above all names.